Proudly, we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Air Force to bring you this. Proudly we hail another airman of the United States Air Force. Our story is entitled, The Competitor. This is the story of a young airman whose eagerness to excel led him into a mistaken conclusion, a mistake which he was later glad to set right. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, are you a service veteran? Then listen carefully. This message is for you. You may be qualified to enlist in the United States Air Force in a grade that will surprise you. If you possess one of the critical skills needed to keep America's air defense strong, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put your skill to work and at a higher grade and at higher pay than you may realize. Write or visit your Air Force recruiter for the special prior serviceman's folder. It's full of important detail. You will see why today and tomorrow you're better off in the United States Air Force. And now your Air Force presents the proudly we hail production, The Competitor. Airman First Class James Burke. Here. Burke, there's a flight schedule for West Palm Beach 45 minutes from now, 1100 hours. Oh, sweat. You'll call me when I'm to report to the flight line. Yeah, just sit here in the passenger's waiting room until you hear your name. Shouldn't be long. Oh, you lucky guy. West Palm Beach. Sergeant Edward Baker. The operation sergeant doesn't know how right he is. This is a trip I've been looking forward to for some time, but for different reasons than just to enjoy the Florida sunshine. Although I hadn't quite expected it to be this way. But then, things don't always turn out the way we expect. The last few months particularly have been <laughs> full of surprises for me. Sitting here waiting for the plane, I can't help thinking back. Two, two years back, really. That was after I'd enlisted and started my basic training at Lackland Air Force Base. I did okay there, and so did everyone in my training squadron. Except one, Dave Underhill. I remember one day when I was talking to the fellow. So you having trouble with Underhill, huh? Well... I wouldn't call it trouble, exactly. Difficulty, it'd be more like it. What's the matter with him? I wish I knew. Just doesn't seem to be able to keep up. I mean, my, my, my flight's had a gig nearly every day, and Dave has been responsible for most of them. Sounds like a hopeless case. Oh, no, not that. He's not incompetent. Maybe he's just a hard luck cut. Oh, hold it. Here he is. Hey, Dave. Dave, come here a minute, will you? Oh, sure. What is it, Jim? Dave, the flight sergeant tells me that you got gigged again today. Your blanket was wrinkled. Uh, that, that's right. And I don't honestly know how that happened. When I left the barracks this morning, it was okay. Uh, but yesterday, your shoes weren't shined. Yes, I was on guard duty the night before, and I... Um, you forgot about him. I, I suppose so. And all the others. Yeah. Know something, Dave? It's these gigs that you're getting that are keeping our flight from being tops in the squadron. I know that. And I'm sorry about it. I've been trying my best ever since the first day I got here, but things just seem to go wrong for me. Sure. Say, look, Dave, do me a favor, will you? Try to remember that if we want to move into the higher bracket, it's going to take an extra effort by each and every one of us. Okay? Okay, Jim, I'll try. I'm sorry if I'm letting you down. If you're letting anybody down. It's not me, but the flight. Yeah, sure, but you... Well, okay, I'll try. Fine. Now you better get ready. We'll be, we'll be falling out soon. Okay, I'll be ready. Seems like a nice guy. Oh, he is, and he tries his best. You can't be too tough on a guy like that. Several weeks later, our basic training came to an end. I lost touch with Dave after that because our orders sent us to different places. Mine to a training school, which prepared me for my first assignment, assistant boom operator of a KC-97C tanker plane of an air refueling squadron in the Strategic Air Command. I'm Staff Sergeant Emil Gabrowski, boom operator of 67809. Oh, yeah. I'm going to be your guide and mentor, as well as your boom companion. <laughs> well, I'm glad to meet you, Sergeant. Same here. 
Only one word of advice. Keep your eyes open. Someday you'll end up lowering a boom, too. Oh, that's for sure. That's the spirit I like to see. And for this crew, you're going to need it. Out of the whole wing, our plane and another one from our squadron are the two leading tankers in performance. That's the whole wing, mind you. Yeah. So you can take it from there. I've got you, Sarge. You can count on me. Yeah, well, I hope so. Because we're out to make ourselves the leading tanker. And that means we all got to put out. Sergeant Andrews' crew, that's the other tanker, they aren't any pushovers. Sarge, I always played first string no matter where I was. Football, baseball, anything. I'll be right in there with you. Fine. Now, let's get down to the plane. I'll brief you on it. Sergeant Gabrowski was right. After several flights, I found out that his crew was tops. But as the sergeant had said, the other plane, 67808, was almost on a par with us, and there was a good deal of friendly rivalry between us. A chow one afternoon, about six months after I'd been assigned to the squadron. Hey, you guys, you see the latest performance chart? We're neck and neck again with guess who? 67809. Who else? Now, don't worry, Smitty, it won't be for long. You guys don't have a chance. By the end of the month, we'll be so far ahead, you'll need two booms to catch up. Here, here, the bottom rung has spoken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I might be a bottom rung, but the ladder I'm on is higher than yours. <laughs> Hi, Sergeant Andrews. Hey, what do you think? Burke here thinks they're going to beat us out this month, and I say he's off his boom. Right, Sarge? I don't know. What? Maybe you forget he's from the competition. Sure, but I've just come from the orderly room. You all know that Haley's being transferred out tomorrow. Yeah, but we got a replacement coming in. Yeah, that's what I thought. No orders have come down yet. And since there happens to be a temporary shortage of assistant boom operators on the base... Oh, no, don't tell me our plane might have to be grounded. Looks that way. Gosh, I'm sorry to hear that. Hey, Smitty, you can stop pounding your skull now trying to figure out who's going to come out on top this month. Hey, you know something, Burke? What's that, Sergeant? I've, uh... I've had my eye on you for some time now. You know, your job seemed to be on your toes. Maybe if I'd speak to the commander about you. Commander? Well, what for? I'm not on your crew. No, not yet. Not yet? Yeah. But if I give you a good build-up, he just might have you transferred to my crew so we can fulfill our schedule. We have an important mission coming up. Go on. You're kidding, Sergeant Andrews. I wouldn't be too sure of that. Even though I thought Sergeant Andrews was kidding, I wasn't too sure that what he had said couldn't come about, considering that his plane had a regular flight schedule. This meant that they would do a job that was part of the SAC mission, whereas our tanker was scheduled for a training flight only. The next morning, though... Hey there, Jim. Morning, Sergeant Gabrowski. What's the matter? Something on your mind? Oh, you know, it's what I told you last night about what Sergeant Andrews said. Oh, that. Well, forget it. Well, I wish I could. Well, you can now. I've just been talking to the first sergeant. He's got orders down assigning an assistant boom operator to the squadron. Are you sure? Yep. Sarge, you couldn't have given me better news. <laughs> not even if you'd have told me I inherited <laughs> a million bucks. They say life is but a series of ups and downs, which is okay as long as they don't happen too close together. But at the time, I was up and down so much, I felt like a yo-yo. The next day after my talk with Sergeant Gabrowski, I went up to squadron headquarters on an arrow. Hey, Jim. Hey, Jim Burke. What? Hey, it's Dave Underhill. Oh, gosh, it's great to see you again, Jim. Ah, yeah, sure. Say, what, what, what are you doing here? I'm assigned here. I just flew in an hour ago. Oh, no, Kenny, what outfit? 150 there, refueling squad. 100 and... Hey, that's my outfit. Your outfit? Hey, that's great. Sure is. What's your specialty, kid clerk? <laughs> no, I'm an assistant boom operator, KC-97C. You are? Uh -huh. Hey, so am I. You must be assigned to 67808. They've got a vacancy there. No, I'm assigned to 67809. Six? But that's my... Uh, David, you, you, are, are, you, are, you, are you positive of that? Oh, that's what they just said in there. Oh, but this is luck. Yeah, yeah, boy, that it is. How long yeah. have you been here? Uh, uh, oh, I've been about six months. Uh-huh. Well, it sure is good to meet someone you know. This is my first assignment. It'll sort of give me moral support to know you're around, Jim. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, why don't you worry, Dave? You'll, you'll be on the best crew in the Air Force. The best. Hey, Sergeant Kabrowski. Now, what is it, Jim? Just thought I'd be the first to let you know. I just found out. Sergeant Andrews must have pushed that deal through. There's a new assistant boom operator assigned to our... I mean, your crew. So that must mean I'm out. What are you talking about? 
About the new assistant B.O., Dave Underhill. He told me he's assigned to 67809. Boy, somebody's off. I saw the squadron orders with my own eyes. He's assigned to 67808. He is? Oh, boy. Oh, talk about living dangerously. What? I should have known. Known what? Well, Dave was in basic with me in my flight. He used to be sort of mixed up guy, and I guess, he, I guess he's still that way. Well, I'm sure glad I'm staying with 809 and that 808 has a full crew again. That way we'll still be able to compete on a fair basis. Well, you can forget about competition with him, Jim. Forget it? How come? For this month, anyway. I just got the word. They got a maintenance problem that's going to keep them grounded for a few days. So we're going to take over their mission. Oh, swell. When's takeoff? Tomorrow morning. So be prepared for a good pre-flight. Of course, every pre-flight check of a KC-97 has to be a good one, but for a flight like this, it had to be extra good. 24 hours a day, there are fleets of B-47s aloft somewhere, so that in case of an enemy attack, these jet bombers will be able to strike back at once. Our mission was to refuel one of these stratojets, a job that's just a bit different than driving into a filling station with your car and saying, fill her up! Aircraft commander to boom operator. Take up your position to prepare for refueling contact. Boom to AC. We'll go. Over. The order of the aircraft commander, Sergeant Kabrowski, lies down in the plastic pot at the rear of our tanker, ready to operate the boom, through which will flow the fuel needed to replenish the supply of Black Cat, the code name of the B-47 receiver. AC from boom operator. Have receiver in sight. Approximately six miles. Switching over to radio VHF. Black Cat... This is Green Star 3, boom. Go ahead, boom. Over. Roger. Take up refueling position. Roger. Ready for contact. Ready for contact. Forward 100 feet. With a minimum of words, Sergeant Gabrowski calmly guides receiver pilot into a position where the end of the telescope boom fits into the receptacle on the nose of the B-47. Contact made. Contact made. And now the precious fuel flows through the lifeline. Refueling, the one function for which a million and a half dollar aircraft was designed and built, and which makes possible the world's most powerful deterrent to aggression, the intercontinental bomb. It's a big job, but one that proceeded smoothly thanks to the steady hands and eyes of Sergeant Gabrowski and the rest of the crew of 67809. Aircraft commander to crew. Well done. Over. Another mission had been successfully accomplished, and naturally, we felt pretty good. So after we landed and had our post-flight debriefing, we decided to relax at the NCO club. <laughs> well, fellas, that puts us on top for the month. Yeah, but there's another month coming up. Yeah, that's the trouble. There always is. Oh, I wouldn't worry. I have a hunch we're going to be on top from now on. What makes you think that, Jim? Well, you all know they got a new assistant boom operator. Yeah, and? Well, see, I was with him at basic, and... From what I've seen of him since then, he hasn't improved much. I, there, there's a guy that starts out with the wrong foot on everything he tries. And I figure it's going to take Sergeant Andrews a while to get Dave on his right foot. <laughs> I mean, he, he means well, Dave does, but like, 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 I remember one day, I remember one day we were given a, a compass problem to work out. See, Dave got the azimuth okay on his compass, but he looked down the opposite end of the arrow, <laughs> which led him back toward camp into the squadron area. <laughs> and guess where he ended up? <laughs> Boy, you won't believe it, but he followed it until... <clears throat> Hiya, fellas. I was so wrapped up in telling my story that I hadn't noticed, but uh, standing right behind me was Dave. How long he'd been standing there, I had no idea. But you can bet that was one story I wish I'd never told. You're listening to the Proudly We Hail production, The Competitor. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. When you make an investment, you want it to pay off, right? Well, men, how about those years you invested in the armed forces, learning skills, gaining experience valuable to yourself and your country? You can make those years pay off in big dividends today by becoming a member of the United States Air Force. Yes, if you've been in any of the armed forces, you may be eligible to enlist in the Air Force in a grade that will be a pleasant surprise. You see, the Air Force needs men skilled in certain important fields, and you may be just such a man. If so, the Air Force offers you an opportunity to put your previous service experience to work and to collect on those credits you've earned toward comfortable retirement. Your Air Force recruiter has a folder full of details, so write or visit him right away. 
ask for the prior service man's folder, and you'll know why, today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Competitor. If I ever entered a contest for the most embarrassing incidents, I'm sure I'd win it with what I experienced that evening when I saw Dave standing behind me in the NCO club. It happened so suddenly that I don't know what I expected him to say or to do, but it certainly wasn't what he did do. Hi, Jim. How's it going? Oh, fine, fine, Dave. Mind if I join you? No, no, not at all. Fellas, meet Dave Underhill. He's, uh, I mean, he, he's, he's an old friend of mine from Basic. Hi. Hi, Dave. Glad to meet you. I've been hearing a lot about 67809 and its crew. I got the number right this time, Jim. Yeah, yeah. Dave. Uh, Sergeant Andrews tells me you're almost as good a crew as his is. Almost. Hey, you better tell him to take another look at the performance figures as of tonight. Okay, okay, no hard feelings. Uh, you're bound to have a good crew with a guy like Jim on it. I'll cut it out, Dave. Why, <laughs> right, it's the truth. You know, back in basic, he was made acting assistant flight leader on his first day and turned out to be the best one in the whole squadron. And that's a fact, because I was there. Yeah, well, we know. He was just telling... Yeah, I was just telling him about basic, Dave, and some of the things that happened there just when you uh, came in. Um, I did, did, didn't you hear? Why, I heard you saying something, but I couldn't tell you what it was. Oh, well, the past is behind us, and let's keep it there, huh? Well, um, I think I'll be heading back to the barracks. I'm beat. You mind if I come with you, Jim? Okay. I'll see you later, fellas. Oh, oh, oh. You know, Jim, it's, it's really terrific, getting assigned to a KC-97 flying crew. Yeah, sure is, Dave. There's no other plane like it. It's a smooth riding plane, all right. But there's nothing like being a part of a top-flight crew. And uh, in connection with that, I'd like to ask a favor of you. Sure, Dave. What is it? Well, since I'm sort of new at this, uh, and remembering how you used to help me along at basic, I, I wonder if you'd give me some pointers. You know, the kind of stuff that only experience can give you. All right. It's not that I'm an eager beaver, but if there's anything I've got my heart set on, it's becoming a full-fledged boom operator. Well, that makes two of us. I don't know how much I can tell you that you haven't been taught already, but one thing I know, every spare moment you get, study up on refueling procedures in SAC Manual 5031. It's got everything there step by step. Hey, you know something? What, Jim? <laughs> I always forgot you're a member of our closest competition. Oh, gosh, I hadn't thought of it that way. Ah, just kidding, Dave. Here's a barracks. Anytime I can help you, I'll be glad to. Just let me know, okay? Okay, Jim. And thanks a million. Pass the ketchup, please. Boy, why anybody wants to spoil a steak with ketchup beats me. Hi, right, man. I hope you saved a steak for me. Yeah, there's plenty here, Sergeant Andrews. See, your crew is back in action. Yep, and you guys better watch out. We're going to catch up with you. You sound pretty enthused. How come? Uh -huh, I got reason to be. Things are turning out better than I expected. Dave Underhill, the new assistant B.O. What about him? Well, he seems to be about as good as Haley was. Fits right in like a glove. Yes, sir? Looks like he'll be okay. What Sergeant Andrews said shut me up for a while. I was surprised to hear that Dave was turning out okay. Yet, peculiar as it may sound, I wasn't. I, if, there, if there ever was a guy at odds with himself, it was me. And I'd, I'd been that way ever since David built me up to my crew that night in the, in the NCO club. I was ashamed of myself for having talked about him as I did. Still, I wasn't convinced that Dave would ever be anything more than the kind of guy who tries his best always but never quite makes top grade. Several days later, I reported to the briefing room for a special crew briefing. Oh, welcome, Jim. Join the gathering. Smitty, what are you doing here? I have you joined our crew by some unlucky chance. You're kidding. I'm still on 808 by the grace of Sergeant Andrews and my efficiency but report. I, I, I thought this was a briefing for our crew. And I thought it was one for ours. Must be a mix-up. All right. Oh, Sergeant Kabrowski, how come we got two crews here for one crew briefing? I don't know. But we'll find out soon enough when the wing commander arrives. Wing commander? Hey, there must be something big coming off. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here he is now. All right, men. <clears throat> Give me your attention, please. Now, uh, as you know, the Air Force is constantly striving to improve its knowledge of the capabilities of its planes and men. In line with that, a flight's been scheduled for a KC-97 tanker from our wing with the mission of obtaining the maximum navigation and training utilization from it. Now, to get this maximum, it'll be necessary for a tanker to remain aloft much longer than usual. So we've decided to use one plane with two alternating crews. 
And I've chosen you men because you're the top two teams in the wing. And I know you'll make the mission a success. That's all for now. Further details will be given to you later. Now, uh, why would they go and do a thing like that? Do what, Jim? Well, they want this to be a success, then why do they pick Sergeant Andrews' crew for you it? You heard the commander. It's one of the top two crews. It was. Look, Sergeant, this is the kind of a thing where a crew has to be tops all the way from the aircraft commander down to the assistant boom operator. Uh-huh, and? And in their case, their assistant B.O. is a man who hasn't had much time to become, to become, you know, assimilated. Don't worry about it, Jim. The Air Force knows what it's doing. The only thing necessary is for each man to do his job to the best of his ability. Yes, I know, but... Well, just a minute, Jim. Now, look. I'm 100% behind you when it comes to trying to come out on top in everything we do. But on this thing, it's going to be different than usual. Instead of competing with Andrew's crew, we're going to be working together for the success of one mission. That's right. So, what do you say we really do work together? And forget about the competition until this mission is over. Sure, Sarge, but it's going to be awful peculiar. Yeah, well, maybe. But I'll guarantee you it'll be interesting. Interesting it was, but for a different reason than either the sergeant or I had thought. Within the week, orders came down for the execution of the mission, and it was decided that Sergeant Andrews' crew would take care of the pre-flight inspection and our crew the post-flight. However, each crew would accompany the other on its inspections. And early that morning, with Sergeant Kabrowski and myself standing by... Let's go, Dave. Boom first. Latch lever. Latch lever in latch position. Stowage latch secure. All dust covers removed. Okay, let's get the boom support stand in place. Right. All right, place it under the boom there, just forward of the rudivators. No leaks on the return lines or skates. Well, that's it. Pre-flight check complete. Sergeant Andrews, this being the first time I've ever seen you in action, all I can say is you sure make a pre-flight look easy. Well, coming from you, Sergeant, that is a compliment. Say, Andrews, in checking the surge boot inflation... Did you ever... Hey, if you went through that like an old hand, if you do as well on the flight, I'll have to... You have to what, Jim? Uh, <clears throat> nothing, Dave. I'll tell you later. Shortly after that, we took off. Our crew took over the first two hours of flight, and I can assure you having someone looking down the back of your neck isn't exactly a comfortable feeling. But after the first couple of reliefs, I suppose we began to get used to it. Okay, time to relieve you. All right, Sergeant Andrews. No? How do you like our tanker? I tell you, Gabraski, it's exactly the same as ours. <laughs> no difference. And you know something else? I think it's that way with our crews, too. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day when you'd say that. Neither did I. I was changing my mind about a lot of things, especially Dave. He handled his in-flight duties just as well as he had the pre-flight. Kept half expecting him to pull a boner, just like in basic. But those basic days were beginning to seem like prehistoric stuff. Yeah, the first few hours we made out well. But then those first few hours grew into six, eight, twelve, fourteen, sixteen hours. <sighs> what time is it? One thirty. A.M. or P.M.? A.M. Well, I never knew 16 hours could be so long. You said it. Oh, how long are we going to be up here yet, Sarge? I don't know, Jim. Well, how's everybody else holding up? Well, considering that none of them has been up in a plane as long as this at one stretch before, they're doing very well. well they look kind of tense, though. You know, this isn't new for me. No, how come, Dave? Before I got into this, I used to be a scanner on a C-124. And you know how long they stay up sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Sergeant Andrews, your shift is up. Okay, Kabrowski. Take over. Hey, why don't you grab a catnap, Dave? No, thanks. I got some things I want to do. From where I sat in my scanner's position, I could see Dave out of the corner of my eye, going among his crewmates with coffee and sandwiches, kidding and laughing with them. From a somewhat droopy crew of an hour or so ago, they were bright and alive again, and somehow their spirit was contagious and went over into us, too. A couple of hours later, when the plane started into its landing pattern, we all felt as though we could go on for a lot longer. About half an hour later in the debriefing room, our mission finished. We found our wing commander waiting for us. It was four o'clock in the morning, but he still took the trouble to come to us and tell us personally what we were sure glad to hear. And speaking for the whole wing, I want to congratulate you. You not only completed your mission successfully, 
You also established an unofficial Air Force record for flying a KC-97 the longest time ever in one flight. 18 hours and 40 minutes. Well done, men. Now get some sleep. Why, congratulations, Sergeant Andrews. And same to you, Burke. You know, I never thought we'd end up congratulating each other on the same mission. <laughs> Neither did I. But we deserve it, don't we? Well, for once, I agree with you. But wait until tomorrow. With pleasure. Hey, uh, Dave. Uh, come over here a minute. Yeah, sure. Well, what is it? I got something to tell you, and I... I don't know how to begin. I think I've been pretty much of a dope. See, I, I thought that you... You'd be like you were at basic, and... Jim, you're not telling me anything new. I know what you've really thought of me. You have? Sure. You remember that night in the NCO club? I heard you telling the crew what I did at basic. Oh, well, I hoped you hadn't. You didn't seem upset or anything. No, I didn't. But I'll have to admit that I was, at first. And then I remembered how you went out of your way to help me at Lackland, even though I was a trial to you. So I made up my mind not to let on that I heard you and that I was going to prove to you one day that I wasn't the same old Dave you once knew. Oh. Well, Dave, all I can say is you have shown me. You sure have. That was six months ago. Now here I am waiting in the operations building. Dave should be along any moment now for he'll be making the trip to West Palm Beach with me. We're both going to take a course of training there that'll turn us from assistant boom operators into fully qualified ones. There's only one thing wrong with this pleasant prospect, and that is Dave and I can never be on the same crew together. Otherwise, I couldn't be happier. Oh, well, there he comes now. Hey, Dave, come on, let's go. We've got a lot to learn, both of us. Today and tomorrow, you're better off in the United States Air Force. Right now, plenty of former servicemen are discovering the truth of that slogan. They're taking a look at the new advantages available under the Air Force's liberalized reenlistment policy, and they're signing up for a profitable, interesting tour of duty with the Air Force team. You see, the new Air Force policy offers a choice of U.S. and overseas assignments, plus a paid 30-day delay in reporting if requested. And listen, even before you enlist, the Air Force may be able to guarantee you technical training and critical skills. In some cases, this guarantee can be made even though you've been out of the service for more than a year. So remember, veterans, regardless of your former service or how long you've been in civilian life, you'll do well to find out about the new liberalized reenlistment policy of the United States Air Force. Talk it over now with your nearest Air Force recruiter. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Air Force. This is Ralph Rowland inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>